Welcome in to Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in. Right now, we're taking a look at what to expect from the remainder of the 2022 season from your Jacksonville Jaguars. First, got to give a shout out to Team USA playing their first match of the 2022 World Cup later today. Make sure to tune in for that. Support Team USA. I'm excited for that one, but we're here to talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're three and seven right now. They're coming off their bye week, set to host the Baltimore Ravens this weekend. We'll get into all that later in the week, but for now, we're still kind of taking more of a big picture approach to the analysis for the next couple days before we get hot and heavy into Jaguars versus Ravens. Uh, But looked at a potential three round mock draft last week. We also looked at Some of the big questions that are going to be facing the Jaguars when they enter the 2023 offseason. Right now, we want to take a look at what to expect from this group for the remainder of 2022. They currently hold the ninth overall pick in the 2023 draft. I'll tell you right now, playoffs is not going to be on the expectation board for the Jaguars for the remainder of 2022. Uh, Even if they get hot With this AFC landscape, I just think it's nearly impossible for the Jaguars to get it done. And you're talking about a team that's been highly inconsistent. Again, they're 3-7 and right now on the year. So I'm not expecting the playoffs at all. But on a macro level, from a really big picture level, I think you want to continue to see full player buy-in, which you've seen throughout the year. A lot of that just comes from... Uh, These guys knowing that Doug Peterson knows how to get the job done and Doug Peterson continuing to show that he knows how to get the job done uh, in the ways that he communicates with his players and the way that he coaches them in his aggressive style. Um, And then you've also got to have Doug Peterson continuing to manage games properly. Uh, I think you've seen him miss in a couple games this year, being overly aggressive late in games or in certain situations. Maybe you just need to run the football. Maybe you need to take the points. Doug doesn't need to lose his his aggressiveness. Like going for the onside kick to start the game against the Chiefs, that was perfect. That was great. Awesome to be aggressive there. But when you talk about uh, a, a young team that really needs help getting out of its way, I think you need to continue to run the ball Uh, in the red zone more and I think you need to continue to take some points when they're available at certain times in the game over the last two weeks or over the last two contests against the Raiders and the Chiefs I think Doug Peterson did a great job managing the game for the current group he has not looking at this group as the 2017 Eagles or anything like that knowing what you have and and calling games to what you have And I think he's done a good job of managing the aggressiveness with managing the ability uh, to get the most out of the current group over the last couple weeks. So that's what I want to continue to see on a macro level. I want to continue to see these players fully bought into Doug Peterson and Doug Peterson uh, fully invested in, in trying to make sure he's doing everything right by the current group of players that he has. On a more micro level, when you look at individual players and different things here, it starts and ends with Trevor Lawrence, right? Uh, second year quarterback, first overall pick in 2021. You want to continue to see Trevor Lawrence show development and avoid the mega mistakes. That's the most important thing you can have if you're a Jaguars fan. The last seven games of 2022, you want Trevor to keep developing. Uh, He's looked really good over the last couple weeks. He's played 10 games total in 2022, again, in a new system, in his second year in the league. And I think he has played winning football in six out of those 10 ball games, uh, based on my assessment. So I think that's overall, you feel pretty good about that. You want to continue to see him play more winning football. And avoiding the mega mistakes is essentially... The biggest thing it's been is taking care of the ball in the red zone. Three interceptions in the red zone for Trevor Lawrence. Had those plays not happened, you might be talking about the Jaguars sitting here with four, maybe five wins on the year. And I think you can put that on Trevor. I think you can put that on a lot of players. I think you can put that on Doug Peterson uh, for not calling the the offense to his team earlier on in the season. Uh, But they're moving in the right direction in my mind. Um, whether it's Trevor Lawrence, whether it's Doug Peterson, I think they're starting to figure out 
um, how to avoid the big mistakes, how to for Doug Peterson, how to coach to the current talent that he has. But for Trevor Lawrence, avoid the red zone turnovers and uh, continue to develop here. He's going to be taking on the Ravens defense this weekend, which is uh, a bit of a bend but don't break group. They force a lot of turnovers. They get a lot of sacks. But they'll allow Trevor Lawrence, in my opinion, to move the Jaguars up and down the field with relative ease. Is he going to be able to get them in the end zone? That's going to be the question. Uh, But Trevor needs to continue to play well against the Ravens and beyond that throughout the remainder of the season. I think you want to see a lot more good performances than bad. Right now, I think there's been six good performances, one very meh performance, which was week one against the Commanders, and then three performances where Trevor Lawrence kind of cost you the game um, and, and certain aspects. So you want to see a lot more good than bad from Trevor Lawrence the rest of the way out. I think Devin Lloyd who's a first-round pick for the Jaguars in 2022. They traded up to get the off-ball linebacker at 27 overall. This is a really talented young football player, but he looks like he hit the rookie wall last week. He was a little bit lost in coverage, but more concerning for me than a couple coverage busts was his unwillingness to play really physical against some of these incoming blockers. He's trying to dip and and run around blockers instead of uh, trying to take them on and shed them and I think Devin Lloyd needs to step up and break down the rookie wall that he appears to hit have hit against the Chiefs. And look, a lot of players look pretty poor against the Chiefs. There's no doubt about it. But he overall had been trending downwards a little bit prior to that game, in my opinion. And then that game was his worst game of his rookie year. You need to see Devin Lloyd, who again, you traded up for. Incredibly talented off-ball linebacker. He should be a complete player at that position. Um, When all is said and done, you need him to break down that rookie wall and play good football for you so you can be encouraged with what you have there going into 2023 instead of maybe thinking, well, does Chad Muma deserve to get more playing time than Devin Lloyd? We'll see how it goes. Overall, I think you want Devin Lloyd and Chad Muma to be your two linebackers for the foreseeable future after Foya Aluakun's deal expires or after you move on with the team out from Aluakun. You want Lloyd and Muma to be the guys there. They have the talent to be the guys there. Devin Lloyd's got to break down the rookie wall, as I mentioned. I also want the Jaguars to figure out what the heck they have in Walker Little. You've seen him play some left tackle for this team. You have seen very little time at right tackle. Cam Robinson ain't going anywhere anytime soon. If you want to wait till you're mathematically eliminated to to see what Walker Little can do at right tackle, I'm fine with that. But you've got to get that kid some reps in multiple games and really figure out what you have, what you think you can build off of with him. Um, and if you want to keep Jawan around, Jawan Taylor – you could also be potentially showing Walker Little off in, in hopes that he plays well down the stretch and um, and shows another team that he could be a starter for them at tackle. I think you've got to figure out what you have in Walker Little before year three. This is a former second-round pick. Just a year ago, you drafted him in the second round. you got to figure out what you have. And whether that's a player that you want to trade for more draft capital whether that's a player that you think can replace Jawan Taylor in the starting lineup so you don't have to pay Jawan Taylor following the season, you got to get some answers regarding Walker Little, in my opinion. You've also got to figure out how to get some semblance of an impactful pass rush more often than you have. They started out really well, this Jaguars pass rush did, over the first three or four weeks. You've got to have guys win one-on-ones, but if they can't, you need to help them more. You need to get them moving more. You see when Trayvon Walker stunts inside, you see a lot of good things happen. Why don't you do that more in these clear passing situations? You've got to figure it out. You've got way too much investment in this group up front for them to not have an impactful pass rush. And Now, I'm not saying they don't create pressure because they create pressure as good as almost anyone in the league, but it's usually like one guy winning a one-on-one. He's not able to make the play because no one else is doing anything to push the pocket or make the quarterback uncomfortable. You've got to get a coordinated pass rush. You've got to figure out how to get that. You've got a former seventh overall pick in Josh Allen in his fourth year. 
He's a talented football player. Trayvon Walker, we knew it was going to be a little bit of a learning curve for Trayvon, but you want to see a little bit more down the stretch here as a pass rusher. We know he can cover and, and, and play really well set in the edge and run defense, but you've got to get him going as a pass rusher a little bit more. You've got to get Josh Allen going. These are two first-round picks, two top ten picks. Trayvon Walker was first overall. You've got to get more. Dewan Smoot, Arden Key, these are veteran interior pass rush specialists. You've got to get more overall. Devon Hamilton, Foley Fatu Kasi, Roy Robertson Harris. There has been a ton of investment up front in the Jaguars' defensive line, defensive front, and they're not getting the job done at a high enough level. We know that it's not great on the back end at left cornerback right now. We know the linebackers aren't doing a great job covering either. One way to overcome that is your pass rush being coordinated and being effective and making quarterbacks uncomfortable, actually hitting the quarterbacks, whether it's a sack or a quarterback hit, whatever. But the pressures are not getting the job done. You've got to impact this quarterback, the opposing quarterbacks. Now, that's going to be much easier said than done against Lamar Jackson in, in week week 12. But they're going to have to figure out how to get a more consistent pass rush over the remainder of of the, this 2022 NFL season. Because if they don't, you're questioning Trayvon Walker, you're questioning Josh Allen, and you're questioning your defensive coordinator, Mike Caldwell, who comes from a scheme, from a system that is known for being able to generate pressure on opposing quarterbacks, and they're not doing it enough. They're not making a big enough impact right now. If you're not able to figure that out, you're going to go into the off season with a lot more questions than you would like. Again, considering how much investment there is up front with this Jaguars pass rush. That is going to do it. Again, on a macro level, you want to see player buy-in. You want to continue to see good coaching and game management from Doug. On more micro levels, continue to see Trevor Lawrence progress as he has over this season. Uh, Devin Lloyd needs to break down that rookie wall and be the first-round pick that the Jaguars drafted him to be. You want to see what you can get out of Walker Little. Uh, hopefully figure something out before he goes into year three. And again, finally, figure out how to create a more impactful pass rush. The Jaguars have had a bye week to figure out a lot of the questions that that have faced them. Have they addressed them properly? We're going to find out when they host the Ravens this Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern, TIAA Bankfield. That will do it. Thank you so much for tuning in, Duval like to remind you to follow me on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo, Generation Jaguar at Generation Jag. Hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also uh, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a show. And, of course, you can become a channel member here. Lots of cool perks, discounts at genjag.com where you can pick up some new Duval gear. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to watch that Team USA game later on. And uh, have a great rest of your Monday, Duval. <laughs>